Okay. All right, so let's talk about uh, the second part of if then, and that is an if then else. Now, this also happened in Scratch. It just looked just like this. We had an if and we had an else. And the else simply means the if part is the if true part, right? So this part is the true part, and the else part is simply the false. Because quite often, if you want um, something to happen if it's true, you probably want something else to happen if it's false. So sometimes we need to do something if something is not true. That's the else part. So suppose you want to input two numbers and determine which one is bigger. Kind of a useless little program, but it's a good example. Okay, so if I want something like this, 56 and 72, 72 is the bigger number, obviously, right? Okay, so your pseudocode, your plan would be get the first number, get the second number, determine which one's bigger, display the bigger one. I think it's kind of obvious, right? So your syntax looks like this. Okay, so if something, 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 then, and don't forget the then part, okay, then this indentation is the true part, the else, and then do something different because the if was false, and then the end if. And the indentation is important. The if and the else and the end should all line up. Okay, Jason has a question. Uh, can we use go-tos? No, go-tos are bad. I really re try to avoid go-tos. They lead to bad habits. Anyways, all right. Quinn, I need you to watch, please. Okay, so we've got if, then, else, and end if. The if, the else, and the end if have to line up. Okay, so here would be my code. Input number one, input number two. If number one is bigger than number two, then print number one is bigger. Else, print number two is bigger. Okay? Be sure to indent the true and false blocks, and you use a semicolon right here. Okay, when I print number one and then I have the semicolon, that means the is bigger is going to be on the same line. If you don't do that, then you're probably going to get a syntax error. Okay, so the semicolon just means don't go down to the next line, the next thing you print. Okay, that's what that means. Okay, so if you look back at that tax question that we did, it was assumed that the PSD was zero if it was not needed. We should probably clarify that a bit. We probably did if PSD equals one, then the PSD tax is the amount times 0 0.07. That may not be the case. Okay, you might want something like if PSD equals one, then the PSD tax is equal to uh, times by 0 0.07 else the PST tax is equal to zero. Because the next time through, next time you do the program, you sort of want the tax to be reset to zero. Okay, so it's a good idea to use else's um, when it might be a little bit unclear. Okay, so here's a practice assignment, just a simple little one using uh, the else. A program is to be created that allows the user to guess a number. If they get it right, they win. And if they get it wrong, tough luck, they lose. Okay, it's just a single chance only kind of thing, right? And it should sort of look kind of like this. Okay? You need a random number. Okay? And let me just explain how this random number stuff works. I talked to Tommy a little bit about the other day. To get a random number between 1 and 10, this is the command. You may want to write that down. Okay? Now you need to watch this. Okay? This is something you're going to need to know. And I, I keep apologizing for not getting the help file. I need to get to the help file, right? A random number, this is how, Scratch did it very easy, you just picked a random number between 1 and 10. Liberty, because they want to make things hard, you would go something like random number equals the int of rnd of 1 times 10 plus 1. I'll explain it in a second. If you want a random number between 1 and 100, it's int of rnd of 1 times 100 plus 1. I'll, what is happening here is the int and the rnd are built-in functions, built-in commands. So, and we're going to use order of operations here. So the first thing it does is it takes an rnd of one. What that means is rnd of one is a random number between zero and one. It's a random number between zero and one, like 0 0.347. Okay, it can only pick a random number between zero and one. I don't know why. Okay, so it takes rnd of 1, which is a random number, times by 10. So if my number was 0.347, when I multiply that by 10, then I get 
3.47. How come? Because I multiplied by 10. Okay. So it takes 0 0.347 and multiplies by 10, and then it takes the int of it. When you take the int of something, you only select the integer portion. So the int of 3.47 is going to give me the number 3, just the integer portion. Then I have to add 1, and so my random number becomes 4. Why do you have to add 1? If I, my random number generator gave me the number 0 0.036, when I multiply by 10, I get 0.36, and I take the integer part of that, and I get a 0. If you want a random number between 1 and 10, you have to add 1. Otherwise, you're going to get, you, there's a possibility you might get a 0. If you want 1 and 100, you have to add 1, but you multiply by 100. What if you want 1 and 50? Multiply by 50 and add 1. What if you want like between 5 and 6, or 5 and 8? Well, then you'd have to take a random, you'd have to go plus 5, uh, multiply by 10, and then if it was over 8, you'd have to try to get it to do it again. You'd have to keep picking until you got it. Terrible. You could you could probably work something out. But generally, we only usually want random numbers between like one and stuff, one and ten, one and a hundred. Nice round numbers. Very. I can't think of a time when you want like between five and eight. Then it'd be times by a thousand plus one. Okay. You're gonna have to be able to use this random number generator thing. Okay. So. So potentially you can get a thousand of one. If you went times by a thousand plus one, yep. no, it wouldn't go more than a thousand, because the highest number you can get is 0.999 multiplied by a thousand would give you 999.9. Integer portion would give you 999 plus one would give you a thousand. Well, yeah. but good question. Okay, so here's what I would like it to look like. I would like you to guess a number, use an input to guess the number. I guessed four, and then I say, no, too bad, correct number seven, you lose. Tough luck. See you later. Okay, that would be the false, the else part. If I say guess a number and I got it right, then it's going to say, yes, you're right. Okay, so you need to have an input for guess a number. You need to have a random number generator to do the random number. And then you need an if, then, else to say if it's right or wrong. I'll give you about five minutes to work on that. You got that. It would appear that most people have got that. Okay. So now let's go back to our in-between game. This is the pseudocode. I need your attention. This is the big top pseudocode. Remember, we printed the instructions, we got the bankroll, we determined the ante, and we printed it. We determined if we have to play. We're going to deal with loops in a bit. We're going to subtract the ante, print the new bankroll. We're going to pick cards and print. Determine if which one's bigger and smaller, or if they match, and determine which game to play. Okay, so those are the instructions. So, I want you to open up in between version 2. I want you to open up in between version 2 and add an else part to the if, so that it says... Bet is too big, try again, or bet is less than bankroll, let's play. So change your in-between so that it either says the bet is too big, or else your bet is good, let's play. Okay. I would also like you to add to the project... I would like you to add three random number variables. Call them card one, card two, and card three. They can be identical. Okay? Card one and two are random numbers between one and 13. Card three is also a random number between one and 13. Remember, when you're playing this game, you get three cards. You get the first one, you get the second one, and then you have to guess whether the third one is going to be in between. So I need three random numbers between one and 13. You can have an input that's going to get the guess to see if card three is in between the first two. And you're going to need some if statements to see if the card is in between or outside the first two numbers. I'm going to say that again. So you need to have three random number generators, card one, card two, and card three. You need an input to say, do you think your card is, your next card is in between or not? Use a one for yes and a two for no. 
And then you need some if statements to see if the card is in between or not. Okay, so you can work on the project. And then I will, oh, in fact, it looks something like this. In fact, how about I just go straight to this and show you what it looks like, kind of. So watch. I've got, everybody watch. I've got input, enter your bet. I have if bet is bigger than bankroll, print. Your bet is too big, try again. Otherwise, or else, print, bet is less than bankroll. Let's play. You'll notice that I have to have an end if. You have to close off your if. It's like closing parentheses, closing brackets. Notice again the if, the else, and the end all line up. Here are my three random number generators, card one, card two, card three. Int of R and D of one times 13 plus one gives me a random number between one and 13. Then I have input. What is your guess? Is it in between or is it outside of the range? I'm going to call that guess. And then I have an if statement. If guess is equal to one, then check to see if I'm in between. How do I check to see if I'm in between? I need something like if card three is greater than card one and card three is less than card two, print you in. Make sure you end that if, because I didn't. Otherwise, and you'll notice here I have a double if. You see that? You see that nested if? I got a double if here. I've got if the card is in between, I end up. This else lines up with this one. This is why it's so important that when you indent, you have to line stuff up, okay? It's super, super, super important. So if the guess is one, we check to see if it's in between. Otherwise, we're going to check to see if it's outside the range. How do we do that? If card three is bigger than card two, or card three is less than card one, then it's outside the range and print, you win, card is outside, because I, I said it was going to be outside. You'll notice that I have a double end if here. This end if lines up with that one. This end if lines up with that one. Okay, you should be able to draw that line like that. Okay, so that's what your project should like. I'm going to leave this up on the screen. Um, can you go to the right there? Yeah. Some said there. I just called a guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Hand in number four. Let me explain this, and then I'll stop talking for the rest of the day. Mr. Bennett wants a program to determine if a student receives honors. So you either get honors or you Excuse don't. Excuse interruption. Okay, so hand in number four looks like this. You either get honors or you don't, okay? Your program will allow him to enter four marks. We're going to use an input to enter the four marks. Calculate the average. How do you find the average of four marks? Um, put all the numbers and divide by Add and divide by four. I will tell you this. You need brackets. Divide by four. And then determine if the student receives honors. If it's bigger than 85, you get honors. If it's not, else, you don't. Okay, that's hand in number four. It should look like this. Enter first mark, enter second mark, enter third mark, enter fourth mark. Here's the average. You do not get honors. Tough luck. Yes. Hey, it was computer science. 97. Here's another one. 78, 96, 89, 97. You got 90. You get honors. Yay. Okay. For hand in four, I want you to write out some pseudocode, write the code, test the code, make sure it works, and hand it in. So you have two things to do. There's the project, which I'm going to put back up. We're going to continue to build the project, bits and bits and bits, and then do hand in four. Remembering I'm not here tomorrow. Okay. Why? Do you need to know why? Yeah. I'll bring a note from my mom. Okay. Just kidding.